Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. We we really like to drink in this house. Uh, we like to drink a lot of different things here, actually. And uh, uh, this this video is about something that I don't really know a ton about, which makes it more exciting for me because I get to kind of learn and explore uh, through it with you. Uh, we're talking about barrel aged gin, which um, uh, I don't have a lot of behind the bar, but Northern Row. Uh, five stories. That's their uh, distillery. They released this uh, barrel aged gin. Um, it's been a little while. I've been kind of busy trying to get things done. Uh, sorry, um, but I have not opened it yet. I haven't tried it yet, and we're gonna we're gonna try it together. Um, this is their. Uh, um, uh, this is a 2020 vintage, um, and then was just released kind of at the end of 2023. So um, uh, I. I, I I guess that meant it means it spent a while in barrels. Um, let's read. Let's see. This will tell us more about it. Uh, this is the first release of our Barrel Age Gin series in which we explore the possibilities of gin through different aging regimens using unique barrels and finishes. Aged for over two years, so yep, there you go, uh, in new charred American oak and Cabernet Sauvignon barrels, that's wine, uh, from our friends over at Revel Urban Winery. Uh, this gin starts with aromas of fresh cut cherry wood, uh, tannins on the palate, and a subtly sweet finish of maraschino cherry, vanilla, and cinnamon. Well, that, that spoils it. I know what it's going to taste like. I guess we don't need to taste it now. <laughs> Joke, and of course we still need to taste it. Um, 94 proof oil. This is a, this is a big boy. Um, it really kind of... Uh, reminds me of um, whiskey when I look at it, so um, definitely curious to see what it will uh, what it will taste like. We got our taster glass. Uh, let's uh, let's pop this thing open. I don't know what the proper way to taste uh, a barrel aged gin is. All right, well at least they put these little tabs in here to make these easier to open. Clean this all up. Oh, look at that. Open right up. All right. Here's what I know about barrel aged gin. Uh, it hasn't been around that long as an actual product category, although uh, a long time ago, gin was stored in barrels just by necessity. They, they, they stored it in barrels, they put it in barrels to travel. Uh, so I assume it got some kind of character from those barrels then. Uh, but it wasn't really on purpose. It was just the necessity of how you had to do things. It wasn't uh, until fairly recent times that people decided to actually start barrel aging gin uh, on purpose. It was about 2008 when Citadel, I think is the name of the distillery, released their Reserve, which was a uh, purposefully barrel aged gin. Uh, and it went over really well. People fell in love with it. They liked, uh, the, they liked the different character that the barrel brought to the gin process. To me, gin as a category is ripe for lots of different experimenting and lots of playing around with different flavor profiles. As long as there's some juniper in there, it's gin. And you can add all kinds of different stuff. So uh, kind of leaning into um, barrels, uh, it, it works. It works. It works really well. It makes sense um, as a different flavor that you can add to this whole thing. Uh, enough talk. Let's... Uh, Let's 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 try this um, because I've been um, chomping at the bit to try this for months. It's been teasing me on my bar. Let me get a little pour here. Yeah, it looks kind of like a uh, like a light whiskey. Um, it's got some body to it, some definite uh, um, alcohol going on there with the uh, the legs on the glass. Uh, let me get in here and give it a good sniff. Oh, okay. Oh man, that is interesting. So I definitely get I get the juniper uh, right off the bat. It's still there. This is definitely a gin. Um, but then there is this really great, almost like um, in my head, I'm thinking uh, vermouth. Um, but I guess that's kind of the the cherry uh, aspect that they were talking about on the label. But yeah, this this smells like a cocktail already. It smells like a gin cocktail. Ooh, I'm excited about this one. Mmm. That is fantastic. Oh, oh, there's this really great, like, uh, peppery, earthy, 
thing that comes in at the end. That is great. Oh, man. Yeah, this does not need to even go in a cocktail. It's perfect like that. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, let's put it on some ice and see what that does, because um, I think that this is only going to uh, uh, improve. We'll just do one little regular ice cube here. We don't want to dilute it too much, but just to take some of that alcohol heat off of it. Man. Oh, yeah. I could just sit and sip that all night long. What's really cool about it is that um, it still has a lot of that fresh kind of uh, herbal, uh, again, juniper. Makes it a good summer drink. Um, but there is this really cool complexity that makes me want to um, kind of sit and really sip on it, which is more of how I drink in the winter. Uh, that's some good stuff. That's really good. Yeah, there's like this this really cool peppery thing. Um, oh, man. The, uh, the complexity to it makes me think that this, I'm thinking cocktails now, this is not a spirit that I would want to use in a uh, longer drink, like a gin and tonic or something like that, uh, because you would lose all of that complexity of the spirit itself. Maybe if you gave yourself a nice healthy pour and put it in with just like some, uh, some soda water, I might be okay with that. But no, this is, this is begging for, uh, just an up cocktail, like a, like a real stiff kind of pre prohibition, um, drink. Holy smokes. That's good. That's good. Uh, get yourself some of this seriously. Um, great stuff. Knocked it out of the park. Uh, good job. Five stories slash Northern row. Um, I approve. That's great. That's really good stuff. That is, uh, that belongs here on the bar. 